Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the conference call of Vinces IT Services India Limited to discuss the Q2 H1 FY24 results. We have with us today Mr. Vikram Patil, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Kunal Patil, Director International, Mr. Karan Patil from Promoter Group, and Ms. Sanika Dhamankar, CFO from Vinces IT Services India Limited. Vinces IT Services India Limited was incorporated in 2008 by Mr. Vikrant Patil and Mrs. Vinaya Patil. The company is headquartered in Pune, Maharashtra and specializes in corporate training and consulting across a broad range of domains. The key business segments are training and certifications, digital learning, IT development services and foreign language services. Vinces offers 326 courses across 17 domains. The company has footprints in USA, UAE, and strong delivery experience in Saudi Arabia. On a consolidated basis, the company reported total revenue of Rs. 79.41 crore, EBITDA of Rs. 10.03 crore, and PAT of Rs. 8.03 crore. The company has grown its scale of operations through consolidation and acquisitions and is now well poised to expand its presence into the Middle East and USA. I would now like to request Mr. Vikrant Patil, Promoter, Chairman and Managing Director to share his opening remarks and insights about the company. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. And I don't know the number, but uh, I, I'm sure it is uh, a good number. <clears throat> and I welcome you all for this call, and I'm really happy to be speaking to all of you. Uh, though it's a, on, 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 it's not a video call, but still I would love to interact with you, and I would not want that to be a one interaction, but going forward also we'll have to have more interactions, and I would love to answer the questions which might you might have and uh, about, about our performance going forward. So thank you very much for joining the call. Uh, and uh, as, as uh, mentioned, that our results are already been published and we have already f uh, uploaded that on the exchange and I'm sure you must have already had a look at it, but still I, I'm very happy to announce that uh, the strong results which we have delivered in the first uh, six months of this year. Uh, as, as you all are aware that we listed on 11th of August, so we've just completed over three, three months and few days. So this is our first call uh, after, after the listing. So I'm really happy and uh, going forward uh, should have more and more interactions. So as mentioned uh, on, on the exchange, uh, when we had already de declared all the results and as mentioned currently also that we've, we've uh, had a very, very high growth uh, and we are very happy that we are right on track uh, for the commitments what we have been doing about the whole year uh, guidance and uh, as, as, as I said uh, the, the training industry and the software development which we are in and the locations which we already have our presence now gives us and after the IPO uh, uh, we have made sure that the, the funds uh, which were available and which were assigned to the proper way which we had decided which is going to give us a major boost in terms of uh, revenue and PAT which we are really very interested in talking about and going forward we look at a major expansion which is happening all across uh, the locations which we are good at. Uh, I would like to mention a few uh, highlights uh, before getting into the question and answer because I'm sure everybody is more interested now in, uh, in the question and answer session because you all must be following us in terms of our performance and the numbers. So that, as I, as I said in the opening remark, that you already have a uh, fair sight of understanding us on the numbers. But still, as I said, uh, we, we are so happy because we could achieve this number in the six months. Because even though, as I said, it's just three months when we listed and we've deployed the funds, and then it, it takes its own time to get the results out of, of those uh, investments and expansions which we have done. But having said that, uh, before the, the while while the September quarter ended, we were only one and a half months old after the IPO, but we still have shown so much of 
growth which gives that confidence to me and to, I'm sure I want to pass on that confidence to you as well as to uh, imagine what will happen with the funds de deployed and once that deployed uh, funds which have been the right way, which we start fetching us the results which we are expecting. So we're very upbeat about it, very happy about it, and we are very, very uh, happy about looking forward on the expansion path. Uh, Middle East, as I said, I'll uh, put some highlights. Uh, as, as even the industry which we are in, uh, the software development which we, we currently do in India is definitely some something which is really on a growth path and so much of uh, investments which are happening in, in digitizing, that that gives us opportunities to actually bid for more projects and with availability of funds, we, we can, as, as in my previous call we had mentioned about the constraints in terms of EMDs and performance guarantees which has gone out and that, that has helped us. Uh, so that industry software development is something which we look in, in, in a major way where we can see the growth coming in. Uh, apart from that, the training industry, which has been our forte, which is definitely growing and which we are we are capturing uh, new territories, including the Middle East. So Middle East uh, has been a very, very uh, strong point for, for us uh, and with, with all the innovations which we have done and the acquisitions which we have done and the the new new domain, the new territories which we have opened ourselves into, it, it's poised for a huge growth for us. Uh, we also have, as I said, uh, Karan and Kunal on this call who had, they're based out of Dubai and they've attended this call from there. They have that plan which is on the expansion path and as, as you must have seen that we have mentioned in the, we have uh, already reported to exchange that we opened in Saudi Arabia and Qatar. And that are the, so we already have our presence in Dubai, Abu Dhabi, uh, also in Kuwait uh, on a smaller level, but now full-fledged into Qatar and uh, uh, Saudi. So these are the major markets in Middle East, and 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 we have done a couple of acquisitions before our IPO. So that has also materialized into getting us more and more uh, reach to the market, where, where in which we'll be able to get more more of uh, the revenue which is which is expected from there. And we are very very happy and a bit about our Middle East operations, and that's where the focus is also, and that's where we are all poised to grow grow there. So that that's. So in the training industry, apart from India and Middle East, we do have that. U.S. is also something which we have expanded, uh, but we are very uh, very small there as of now, but we will definitely go ahead and do that uh, in the next phase of growth. Uh, software development, as I mentioned, in India we are really doing well, and basis that we have also looked at, we have also declared to the exchange that we have got a couple of uh, acquisitions which we are looking at. We have already signed... Uh, uh, the term sheets with both 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 companies which we are actually trying to look in. The, the exchange has already been notified about it, and we are also looking at completing those transactions as early as possible in, in the couple of months going forward. So mergers and acquisitions is also one of our top agendas, and uh, we've also hired new people in the new location. So the team is set. Uh, the locations are being identified, and already offices have opened. Software development is something which we are, on, as I said, we are looking, and that is also poised for growth. So overall, uh, we are on track, and uh, uh, for the for the we already have back few orders. We have already uh, informed Exchange about those orders, which which are right now currently when I speak to you are under execution, and we are very happy that the execution is going on very well in those orders, and uh, we 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 would be on track as to what we have already decided for, for this year. So I'm very happy and very confident about delivering the results what we have promised. Uh, and this would not have been possible without your uh, contribution, whatever you have done during the IPO, post-IPO. And having faith in us and uh, re request to have the same and confidence and faith, and we will definitely make sure that we deliver what we promised. So thank you again for joining and finding out time for this call. And uh, I would want, as I said, I didn't want to have much more time, but want you to have the question and answer session going forward. And uh, we, we welcome your questions for that, and we are very happy to answer. I have team, as, I, as it was mentioned, Sanika, our CFO, is also with me. So any numbers, if you want, she would take those calls if it's required. And we also have Kunal uh, in sitting out of Dubai. He is also very happy to take any questions which are related to that uh, uh, location. 
So over to you uh, uh, for the question and answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchdown telephone. The operator will take your name and announce your turn in the queue. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have a first question from the line of Mayur Liman from Profit Mart Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, my f uh, first question is about the global, uh, global presence. Right now, the company is in the five countries. Please provide a uh, geography wise revenue breakdown. Oh, you want the geography wise revenue? Uh, so, see, geographically, if you see, uh, Currently, we are in India, and apart from that, majority of it is in, in, in Dubai. Uh, so we have Dubai, Abu Dhabi, uh, which was already there for the first six months. So if you ask that the revenue would start for Saudi Arabia, uh, Qatar, which will start from this, uh, this, this month. So if you ask for the uh, revenue, which is geographically outside of India, was 20.44 crores. Uh, out of the revenue which we have uh, uh, declared of 79 crores, 20.44 uh, was from uh, kind of those countries. If you ask me, majority of it, 80% of it is between Dubai, Abu Dhabi. 90% uh, of it is between it, Abu Dhabi and Dubai, and 10% would be from the US. Uh, so these are the three locations which which have contributed to this revenue. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, please share the strategy uh, for the global uh, presence expansion. Uh, how did the company select uh, any country for the expansion? What are the parameters the company follows? That will give us the more clarity about the global presence strategy for the company. Okay. So the global strategy, as you are aware, we have been uh, present in the industry for almost now 23 years. So we understand the education market. We understand the software market. And we also understand the competition which is there and how do we cater to all this and make sure that we are successful. So basis that we have already, because of our expansion which we had done in, in the Middle East, uh, couple, uh, it's almost the 10th year now. Uh, so we, we had acquired few companies previously in the Middle East. So if you, I'm very happy and confident and I would rather uh, say here that we, we are uh, amongst the top two uh, uh, training in providers in, in the whole Middle East. So we, we, it's not that the strategy is something which we have decided now, but it is over a period of several years which we have created this name for us, and that's why we are, we are dominant there and we are also present there. Now, we wanted to make sure that this has been ex extended to the other locations so that a whole of the Middle East becomes our major focus and there, uh, we are much ahead than the competition and we make, make sure the market share has been acquired by us before anyone comes in. And then it makes sure we, we are very good at retaining our market share. So uh, because of our experience of 25 years in this industry, we are very good in, in maintaining our market share. So we were lacking there with our uh, reach. So that's where we made sure that Middle East, in, in Middle East, if you ask me the strategy, Abu Dhabi and Dubai, uh, apart from that, Saudi Arabia is a major player in Middle East, if you ask me. And uh, that's where the majority of the spend comes in. But previously, we were not present in Abu Dhabi, uh, in Saudi Arabia, because we have to have the new law says that we have to have a local presence there, we have to hire local people, and we have to have the local registration there. So we, it was very easy for us to manage Dubai and Abu Dhabi and with the new generation in the, in the promoter group and in the new generation which has already come in with, with their help. So we are very well poised. If I tell you this, the strategy-wise, Middle East is our major. So they, I, as I said, we are very, very ahead of anybody there and that's where we are creating, making sure that we capture all the market share. So that's one strategy. So that's where uh, that led us to get into Qatar as well. So there also we have now have our office, we have our local recruitment, the local registration has happened. So Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Dubai and Abu Dhabi are the majority of them and Muscat is something which is also in, in the plan. So that caters to the Middle East uh, market for us. And the second strategy, 
so this is this is a no brainer for us we are uh, strong we want to make uh, ourselves more stronger by ex expanding into that region with our lo having local presence so that uh, that answers your question on the strategy in the middle east and similarly we are looking at um, uh, us as our second option wherein a uh, second point wherein we would definitely look at because us market has a potential of having uh, so much of a requirement which comes in from there for both software training and for software development so next, that's where we have started our inroads and as i said we are a little smaller there but we want to make sure in our strategy that we will definitely be become bigger and that will also be create us a major market share from there currently the market share is very very less for us because we are very small there but the even even a 1% of share in the market in the us is a huge market wherein uh, that that will give us so in in middle east our strategy is to be bigger and uh, present at every location and get the maximum market share of it whereas in us the market market share itself is so big so even if some portion of it comes to us it's it's, it's a big number for us so these are the two strategies as of now for this year wherein we'll uh, consolidate on middle east and expand in the us i just right. to add on Yes, sorry, yes, yes. Just to add on, sorry, just to add on to the strategy of Middle East is that, uh, you know, till the last couple of years, Middle East was quite reserved and not open to global players and uh, global population. Given the changes in the policies and the whole government policies in the Middle East region and the growth towards tourism and openness to all the international companies and people, the demand in the market has also increased drastically. Which was lacking in the couple of years. Like Saudi was not uh, allowed for companies from global companies to open their offices there. But now they have given that because there's a huge requirement in terms of their growth. So recently they've just won the new expo in 2030. So the boom and the demand in the market also has increased, to which made us lead taking decisions where you know the 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 demand has become greater. So the expansion for us becomes a no-brainer because the demand is already there. And hence, we've taken that as a part of plan uh, to, you know, foothold our presence in the Middle East very strongly. Uh, and then hence, we're expanding all the to the major uh, countries in the region. Uh, okay, thank you, sir. Uh, that will um, give us more cl uh, clarity. Uh, clarity. Uh, my next question on the CapEx, sir. Is any CapEx plan for the future? Well, whatever we had disclosed in our uh, DRHP, we are only sticking on that. And now the advantage for us is uh, because of online training, so we, we don't have to have our physical centers uh, to be equipped with training rooms. So that our major capex was has always been on the physical training rooms to be constructed. But that has so we have an advantage now that uh, the training can happen online. So we definitely need a local presence with local sales team, but we don't need huge office space, which was our previous, before our IPO, we, before COVID, we had that uh, requirement always as to having our own. So CapEx-wise, uh, we would not be majorly getting into any any of that. But uh, yes, a small portion, as, as mentioned in the DRSP, is, is still is, is going to be spent, but not on the, that level wherein previously before COVID was what was the CapEx requirement. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. And my last question is, uh, what is your expectation from the next quarters or uh, next half year? Next half year, as I said, we are very, very upbeat, and I am so happy uh, I'm being restricted to give forward uh, uh, <clears throat> numbers, but still, we whatever we had promised, we, we definitely are, are on track, and we would definitely, we will be delivering that. And we have, as I said, it's not just because I want to say it, because the pipeline is there and the executions are on. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for the question. question. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Utsav Adisara from Nilesh Parikh. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. First of all, congratulations for getting listed company. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, मेरा स्टार्टिंग के पाँच दस मिनट में ज्वाइन नहीं कर पाया था तो आपने टॉप लाइन और बॉटम लाइन ये साल के एंड में क्या रहेगा वो आप थोड़ा बता सकते हो तो टॉप लाइन जो हमने बताया था 
और जो प्रोजेक्ट किया था तो ग्रोथ वाइज थी एनी वेज विच वी हैव ईयर ऑन ईयर वी हैव ऑलरेडी वी हैव ओवर एचीव वॉट वी हैड ऑलरेडी अचीव लास्ट ईयर सो इट्स बेसिकली द ग्रोथ इज बिन फिनल एंड गोइंग फॉरवर्ड एज इट है इफ यू सी द कंपेरिजन इनफैक्ट द the numbers are already available on the exchange which we have already uh, sent that pro- presentation if, if that you will be able to get it but we are looking at uh, at least uh, reaching to uh, increasing our revenues to at least what we we deliver if we are delivered 95 crores last year so we are make, we are making sure that we already have reached 80 crores by first six months if you see that so that that's the growth we want to maintain and we want to reach the 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 numbers which we had promised so if 80 is already done in the first 6 six months 6 six months itself so definitely we are on track to double that what we have done in the first 6 months okay means uh, uh, we we would definitely love to do that we we'll definitely oh. love to do Okay. In short, last year say at least uh, 60 to 70% growth on been success definitely that that's what we are looking at because we already done it now so we are right on track okay aur aur jo aapne kaha ki ye saudi arabia aur qatar ka jo operation se is month se revenue start ho jayega to aur baki ke jo bhi aapki strategy hai to uske muqable agle 2 3 saal yahi growth rate continue reh sakta hai definitely sir definitely definitely we 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 are also doing acquisitions we are also bidding for more projects so we we would not want uh, to uh, sit on our laurels but we want to always increase our benchmark and we want to make sure that we give the best to our shareholders as well yes sir thanks a lot thanks a lot thank you sir. thank you thank you Before we take the next question, we'd like to remind participants to press star and one to ask a question. We have a next question from the line of Deepak Poddar from Sapphire Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, I'm audible, sir. Yeah, yeah, you are. Very much. Uh, also, uh, I think, uh, uh, sir, in your opening remark as well as uh, to one of the, I think, answer you mentioned that uh, we are we are very upbeat and. and uh, we are on track uh, to what we have promised so just wanted to uh, reiterate so what 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 we have said in the past in terms of our outlook so we we have been always saying that we want to reach uh, something at least on the pat side we definitely on the revenue side we are seeing a exponential growth as well as we want to make sure that that is also replicated into our uh, earnings so that's where we are looking at increasing from 40 to 50% cagr on our pat Uh, every year is what we are trying to push ourselves and try and make sure that we achieve that so the, uh, 40 50% pat cagr for next 3 years we we definitely have our targets set accordingly and 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 this includes our inorganic uh, aspirations right yeah, yeah it's all put together all put all, together. all put together we are looking at 40 50% uh, um, pat growth for next 3 years uh, including the inorganic aspirations absolutely Uh, and uh, i mean um, just wanted to understand if you see last three half year lease our ebitda margins have been quite volatile i mean in the first half we had 13% last year this this year first half we had 12 12.5% and second half last year we had 24% ebitda margin so i just wanted to understand why is so much volatile uh, volatility in your ebitda margin and how how one should you look at going forward two, two things in that uh, one was the last year if you see uh, Uh, the acquisition uh, of of one of our manpower division which was there which was not included in those numbers which happened only in the month of january 2023 so those numbers are not included in that so that's the revenue side but if you see on the pat side uh, big, there are a couple of uh, um, advantages which we had this year it, it, it's not volatile because uh, i would say that if you uh, the manpower revenue in our 80 crores this this year yeah uh, it's almost around 38 crore so uh, but if you see uh, and in the last year if you see there's no manpower revenue included in that so the the ebitda margins were less that time but if you see this year out of 40 crores we have done almost 7 and 1/2 crores of uh, on ebit if you talk about ebitda we have almost done 9 9 and 1/2 crores which is uh, margin wise if you see it's more than 22% 
so that is something uh, which is really good, and this is what we we want to maintain. Manpower business has its advantages, but it also has a lesser. Uh, as I, if you had uh, if you had uh, attended my previous calls, you would have understood the the division of. Uh, the revenue coming in from three different pillars. So manpower is one of them, which we definitely want it because it has its advantages in our bidding process for our software development project. Mm -hmm. But the margins are less there. So if you consider out of this 80 crores, 40 crores from the training and software development business, the EBITDA margins are much higher. It's almost around 24%. And that is what we would want to maintain it for the whole year, every for the next couple of years, three years at least. Okay, uh, I I got it. So so the, so the the, uh, the this volatility or, or or what we perceive as the volatility is because of your revenue mix. If your manpower, so this yes. half yearly or fifty percent of revenues has come from manpower, which was yes. so yes. effectively that that means your training software development had not seen much growth, right? So it is almost around twenty percent growth because if you see by September till August eleven we were actually we listed. So the first six months we were already into all these processes and uh, we were into all this. So that and then we had bidded a lot of projects also, so which we got awarded in the month of uh, October and we have started execution of those projects. So everything the first six months were very volatile for us because it was a new it was a change for us. 11th August is where we we actually listed ourselves. So that is where we. So now going forward we want that consistency wherein. Uh, we've understood, we got the grip of this uh, whole situation now, and we have the funds available, we have invested, we have... In, in fact, what we did is, uh, in the month of June, July itself, we started investing in, in people. Because it takes time for us, once we invest into people, our business is wherein that doesn't mean that you have more people, the revenue immediately uh, goes up, it takes its own time. So what we had to do is, the, so there was a lot of investment which has gone in, and that that definitely goes towards the expense part of it, and then the pattern gets affected. But now the results will be seen this 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 half year. Okay. So uh, so what effectively you said is that uh, um, I mean uh, in, in last year first half our total revenue was 34 crores, which did not include any kind of manpower revenue. So it was oh, purely my training and dev software development, which 34 crores became 40 crores in the first half of FI 24. Uh, uh, 41.28 41.28 and remaining being the manpower. No, but going forward, how how should we look at manpower revenue? I mean, will this run rate continue? I mean, this 30, 40 crores kind of a quarterly run rate or or, or how, how one should perceive as a... Uh, so half yearly, so we're looking at around 70 crores, uh, 60 to 70 crores from the manpower and the remaining uh, almost around 90 crores uh, from our, uh, that, that is the growth we are looking at from our software, 90 to 100 crores from our software and training business. And oh, then so also, uh, international uh, was small, now it, it's become big, so that will also contain. In international, we don't do any manpower. Manpower is only in India. Okay, so 90 crores for training software and 60, 70 crores for manpower. So ideally that's 60, 40 percent ratio. So your, your overall EBITDA margin then would, would would remain in the range of 13, 14, 15 percent, right? Yeah, absolutely right. Absolutely right. For FI, FI 24. Absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, EBITDA should be, yeah, so because, and we are trying to make sure that uh, the training and software development revenue increases little more, which, which is what we are looking at, and we are hopeful that will happen. So, we are looking at targeting anything around 15 to 16 percent of the EBITDA margin. To consolidated at the, at the consolidated level. I mean, but for, if you see on the PAT side, uh, the PAT side uh, for training and software development is much, much. Uh, if you only consider training uh, and uh, software development, the PAT, EBITDA margin is almost around 25% on that, 25 to 26%. Understood. And then how do we see this mix of manpower and training software revenue in FI25? 25, I see, the manpower is something which may not grow. But software and uh, training definitely want to grow because that is where, so as I said, uh, the advantage with the manpower is that it increases our uh, threshold of bidding for bigger projects because of our consolidated revenue. So we, we qualify into a different bracket for software development uh, training bids, which we, we, we actually, the RFPs which we bid for. So that's why we definitely want that to be part of us. Plus it shows our strength of having people on our roles also. 
which is also a prerequisite for qualifying for few of the projects. So that will still remain there, but uh, we, it has its own advantages. But uh, uh, going forward, we want to maintain it to that level only, but increase our software development and training portion more. And it will definitely become uh, more because the expansion is all happening in that itself. And the, all the IPO funds, uh, most of them are getting into that itself. So it will definitely, uh, the concentration is always on software development and training and in the location, Middle East and US. So, uh, so ideally your EBITDA margin will improve next year, right? I mean, because your mix will will uh, will uh, will be more yes, towards software. Do that, and that's our that's our target as well. So, what would be our EBITDA margin range for next year? Next year, we we, we definitely for EBITDA margin, if consolidated basis in next year, immediately it may not change much, but we definitely want to increase it to, to make it up to anywhere between 16 to 20. But year after that, yes, that will definitely be. And I, we have a few pipelines, so even next year also we would want to improve that. So next year, FI25, 16 to 20 percent EBITDA margin we are looking at, right? Yes. Okay. And 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 just one last thing, manpower. What is our? Uh, I mean, uh, um, margins. I mean, just like you mentioned, training and software it is about 24 percent. For manpower, what is our margin? Two 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 percent. Two percent. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. I think yeah, that's it from my side, sir. Uh, I think all the very best to you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and 1 on your phone now. Participants are requested to press star and 1 to ask a question. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Kunal Patil, Director, International Advances IT Services India Limited, for closing comments. Over to you. Uh, so thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, I really hope you found this call informative and you found have got a better understanding of a company's performance and outlook in total. I'd just like to reiterate some of our key takeaways from the today's call. Like we said, we are making a very strong progress on our strategic initiatives. We are very committed to delivering the sustainable growth and profitability that we are aiming at. And we are excited about our future of our company. We are also confident that we are well positioned to capitalize on the opportunities ahead. We have a very, really strong team, a clear strategy, and a solid track record of execution. So we really look forward to sharing our progress with you on all our future calls. Thank you once again for taking out some time and, in and showing interest in knowing about our outlook. Thank you all. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Binsys IT Services India Limited, that concludes today's session. Thank you for your participation. You may Thank now you. exit the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.